Hello everybody and welcome back to another Subnautica video and today I'm going to be showing you guys three different places to get rubies in Subnautica Below Zero. Um, so I'm just going to get right into it. The first place um, which is actually not marked by a beacon is the Copper Mining Zone. Now I already made a video on how to get here, it's a little bit complicated so I'm going to refer you to that video, uh, the link's going to be in the description. This is by far I think the safest and best place to get rubies. Um, it is a little bit difficult to get there, but I'd say it's 100% worth it. There's some blueprints and some fragments and other ores on there that are also helpful that you could get while you're down there. So yeah, that's the first place, and I'll cut to it right now. So here we are at the Cup of Mining Zone. Um, this is the entrance. Um, if you follow the video, you should be able to get here. Now, from here, you should be able to find rubies, like, absolutely everywhere. Um, on the ground, like here, you can see two... Um, if you keep going forward, you should be able to find more on the ground. I want to bring your attention to one specific place, which has a large ruby deposit. You are going to need a prawn suit um, with a drill arm to um, get this deposit, which I've already said before, but um, just in case if you didn't hear. Um, here it is. You just turn left after the entrance, after following the tunnel at the entrance, and you'll find this. You can mine this to get some more ruby as well. But there is, there is plenty of ruby all over the ground and sometimes even the roof that you can pick up. And yeah, by far this is the safest place out of the three. Now it's not that the other two are completely impossible to reach, it's just why not be as safe as possible. Um, it is a little bit difficult to get here, but I'd say it's worth it. Just clear all this out. There's other resources in here, um, like this gold, like titanium, and yeah, there's also some fragments. So it's overall a pretty good place to be. Um, yeah, but this is the first location that you can get rubies. All right, guys, I'm back at the surface, and now I'm going to go to the second place. The second place I'm going to go to is actually the tree spires. Um, so how you get there is just go to your life pod. Let me find my life pod. It is right here. Stand above it, and then go one tick to left, maybe one tick and a half to left of south. Um, if you don't have a compass, you can use this giant ice spire as a landmark to help guide you. It should be like right at the edge of your screen, like that. Just so it looks like a gun, like that. And you just head straight forward. Now, this is pretty far away, and there is a leviathan here. Now, you should be fine as long as you kind of steer away from it. Um, when I get there, I'll show you how. But yeah, there's only one leviathan on the way there, and once you get past it, it's pretty safe from there um one thing to keep in mind is that this is relatively deep this is a little bit below 300 meters um now you can get here with a just a regular sea truck it's just you're gonna, you're gonna need a decent oxygen tank to be able to go down and scavenger for the rubies now uh, yeah i would recommend at least a mark one depth upgrade for the sea truck but you should be fine if you don't have anything and you have a sea glide at least and a decent oxygen tank but yeah i'll see you when i'm there okay so you're gonna get to this island and it's pretty hard to keep your um direction because i have a beacon here so it's easy but it's gonna be pretty hard to remember which direction you're going after you go around this um island so what i would do is just go all the way around Go past the Delta Station and stuff. Just continue going around. And then once you're on the other side, um, I can help realign you. Like, it should... The tree spires are really close to the other side. But just in case if you um, get lost, you can stick really close to the edge here. And then you kind of want to be... as You want to try and get as close as possible to the satellite without getting out of the water like look like once you or not satellite like the radar thing once you're like at this point like you can you can get pretty close to it in the water then you're then you know you're on like basically the opposite side of the island from here you can turn around on the opposite way and continue on forward now careful this is right where um a leviathan spawns um once again if you stay low to the ground you should be safe. I'm going to try and go a little bit higher. And try and find the Leviathan just to show you what it looks like. I might not even find it. That's how insignificant it is. But uh, that's not it. 
it's somewhere around here but there there is a leviathan that spawns here it's just a precautionary measure just try and stay low to the ground and go under it but yeah basically what you want to do is you want to stay low to the ground as i said multiple times and continue going on forward and oh there it is that it, that's it right there just stay low to the ground and just ignore it if it roars don't go towards it just once again stay low to the ground keep on going and until you find this giant um, vent guard now I'm gonna stop around here because this is around where you'd stop if you don't have a depth um, upgrade so here you can get out and the place where we want to go is right at the bottom of this vent garden now this is called the vent garden fissure and down here there are rubies not as many as there are in the copper mining zone uh, in the first location but there are still some here if we go down here there's also other things like rubies and um uh, uraninite whatever how you pronounce it but yeah um as you can see there's also rubies down here there's one two keep going down there's another one there's another one there's multiple here so yeah this is a pretty good place to um get rubies there's another one there and you can't technically continue on down here and there's still like look another ruby there another ruby there another ruby there um there's a lot of rubies down here um and yeah you can collect all these this is not as once again expanse as a couple mining zone but there don't get me wrong there is a lot of rubies here um but yeah and if you still can't find any rubies even after both of these locations um i'm gonna head over to the third location right now so see you there hello everybody and this is now gonna be the third location if you're still here i'm guessing that you had no luck with the first two locations now this third one, I would say, is the worst out of the three. It's not that it doesn't have rubies. It's just that it's deep and it's hard to find. It's around the same depth as the um, tree spires one. It's, um, yeah, around that depth. There's not that many rubies here. This should be used for, like, worst-case scenarios. If you're really looking for a lot of rubies and you've expended the resources on both of the other locations, then I'd recommend this one. Um, to get here, you want to go around... A tick and a little bit uh, to the right of southeast if you don't have a compass you can use this little gun shaped dice thing to the left of my screen right now um, as a guide you want to head in this direction from your life pod and you just want to go straight forward um, there aren't any serious concerns such as leviathans and stuff when you're heading to this biome it's mostly just smaller creatures they might be dangerous just if you really start taking a lot of damage, you can get out of your sea truck and repair it. Um, once again, this is around the 300, 350 meter uh, depth mark. So it is recommended to have at least the Mark 1 depth module for the sea truck. But it's fine if you don't. You can just sea glide down with a decent oxygen tank. Um, but yeah, I'll see you when I'm there. So a good indicator that you've reached your location is that you start seeing this um, white, um, not white, green uh, grass at the bottom. You should be around, let's see, should be around 900, no, 1000 meters away from your light pod. And that's when you know that you've reached location. These are the lily pads. Um, now this biome doesn't actually have any rubies on the surface level. You're going to have to go down into the deep caves the deep deep lily pad caves so these can be a bit disorienting and tricky to find and this is why i don't really recommend this even i have trouble finding these sometimes but the best way to do it is just to find one of these deep crevices um and just get out around 200 meters pull out your sea glide and just go down and start exploring um once you've reached a deep deep cave that's where you can start finding some rubies um i might even have trouble finding some right now on camera because it's just that 
rare to get them here. I can try, but once again, this spot is not the most fantastic. Um, yeah, see right here, it already resurfaces. Um, but yeah, this is this is the biome where you want to go and be at if you're really in need of rubies and the other two locations didn't work. You can wander around here for 10-15 minutes and you'll probably find a cave or two. Um, and you can get a decent amount of rubies. Not an insane amount, but good enough to make a couple aerogel that you really need or something else like that. Now, um... That's the end, those are the three locations, so remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and if you um, are looking forward to more Subnautica content and tutorials. And if you didn't enjoy the video and it didn't help you, don't just leave a dislike, well feel free to leave a dislike, but also leave a comment so I can improve my videos and yeah, make the next video better to help more people. Uh, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.